the Elizabeth Line, formerly known as Crossrail, finally opened 24th of May 2022. It runs from Shenfield and Abbey Wood in the east, through the heart of London to Reading and Heathrow Airport in the west. At the time of filming, the line was fully open only between Abbey Wood and Paddington, and it wasn't possible to alight at Bond Street. As an experience for this tour de force tour, I travelled on the newly constructed part of the line from Farringdon to Canary Wharf and then on to Abbey Wood. As one would expect, the Elizabeth line is future-proof, making a fascinating comparison, at least architecturally, with the first underground line at Baker Street, the Metropolitan, built over 150 years ago. The trains are full, or I should say standard size, powered by overhead electric cables and designed to integrate with other services on the overground outside central London. I will let you judge the success of my images, video too, but my methods are a little unconventional and sometimes considered incorrect, even wrong. Obviously, I have to handhold in the underground, but sharp images at long shutter speeds are not a problem with my EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, as both have image stabilizers, and there is a separate facility for video stabilization. I spot meter for greater exposure accuracy with an electronic finder save the raw and correct any blown out highlights or dense shadows in Adobe Lightroom as well as correcting color balance. You might be surprised to learn that I shoot on program with my personal settings, leaving the camera to sort out exposure which by default will use the shortest shutter speed possible. I do not complicate matters by using filters or any other device from which I cannot backtrack from when things go wrong, or change my mind, which any artistically motivated photographer is prone to do. By keeping it simple, you have more time to change things at home, and through experience I have learned how to work quickly and unobtrusively on site with preferably my back against a wall or pillar. In short, I don't muck about trying to be clever, but not of course by relying on auto. My technique is closer to snaps, not photographs, and it works. Some of the videos were taken with the smaller and lighter entry-level EM10, but I let you spot them. I've forgotten anyway, but I could check later on the metadata, couldn't I? Surfacing at Canary Wharf, I have to correct converging verticals courtesy of some rather tall buildings. This is dealt with in post-production. Converging verticals work if the ground is not shown, but when included, I accept them when taking the shot and later exercise my Samson skills in reverse by putting the skyscrapers back in Lightroom instead of knocking them down. It helps if the amount of convergence in camera is symmetrical, not always possible. Correction can also be done in camera, but I have more time at home for tweaking the final result to a raw file. I confess to being a bit of a country bumpkin, finding Canary Wharf claustrophobic, but couldn't resist treating myself to a short trip on the Docklands Light Railway. It is interesting to reflect that when Canary Wharf was first mooted, there wasn't any convenient public transport routes out of central London. Today, in addition to Docklands Light Railway, there are the Jubilee and Elizabeth Lines. The Elizabeth Line terminates at Abbey Wood, and yes, there is an abbey, now ruined, and a wood. 
but I bet house prices have shot up since the monks occupied the abbey. On the return, I alighted at Custom House and took the short walk down to Royal Victoria Docks for a sunset, making a satisfactory conclusion to a memorable day. This was my first visit, but I always carefully research a new area from the Ordnance Survey map. I spot meter to preserve colours, a problem when a sunset is surrounded by heavy shadow, but not here, as I am shooting over water. <laughs>